This is Richard Allen at OculusSurge.com. This video demonstrates a small scalp incision temporal brow plasty with the addition of a brow pexy. I believe that this is a useful procedure for patients with moderate brow ptosis who are also undergoing an upper blepharoplasty. The needle tip cautery is used to make an incision along the previously marked blepharoplasty marking. A flop of skin and orbicularis muscle is removed. This could be skin only if the patient has a component of dry eye. The medial fat pad is mobilized and resected. The needle tip cautery is then used to dissect along the surface of the orbital septum to the superior orbital rim. The orbital rim is identified and the brow fat is dissected from the periosteum of the superior orbital rim. A freer periosteal elevator is used to dissect in a pre-periosteal plane along the length of the superior orbital rim from the area just lateral to the supraorbital neurovascular bundle to the lateral orbital rim. This is performed superiorly, approximately 2 cm superior to the superior orbital rim. The needle tip cautery is then used to make an incision through the periosteum extending from the superior orbital rim medially, just lateral to the level of the supraorbital neurovascular bundle, extending superiorly and then lateral to the level of the conjoint tendon. The freer periosteal elevator is then used to elevate the periosteum superior to the incision. Attention is then directed to the contralateral side where the procedure is performed similarly. Dissection is carried out along the anterior surface of the orbital septum to the superior orbital rim, preserving the brow fat. The freer periosteal elevator is then used to dissect along the surface of the periosteum superiorly along the superior orbital rim. Care is taken medially to not compromise the supraorbital neurovascular bundle. The needle tip cautery is then used to incise the periosteum 2 cm superior to the superior orbital rim and then descending to the superior orbital rim just lateral to the supraorbital neurovascular bundle. The freer periosteal elevator is then used to elevate the periosteum superior to the incision staying medial to the joint tendon. The supraorbital nerve can be exposed medially. Additional dissection is carried out superiorly. This subperiosteal dissection can be extended medially along the bridge of the nose. Attention is then directed to the temporal scalp incision. The incision will straddle the conjoint tendon, and a 15 blade is used to make an incision through the skin and subcutaneous fat. Metzenbaum scissors are then used to bluntly dissect to the deep temporalis fascia. Dissection is then carried out inferiorly along the surface of the deep temporalis fascia. This dissection is lateral to the conjoint tendon and is continued inferiorly to the upper blepharoplasty incision.
A freer periosteal elevator is then used to dissect to the bone medial to the conjoint tendon. The freer is used to complete the subperiosteal dissection medial to the conjoint tendon. Metzenbaum scissors are then reintroduced through the incision to transect the conjoint tendon. The scissors are placed medially in the subperiosteal plane and then laterally in the plane on the anterior surface of the deep temporalis fascia. Each blade of the scissors is placed in each of these planes and then the conjoint tendon is incised. This is performed to the level of the blepharoplasty incision, resulting in complete mobilization of the forehead. Attention is then directed to the left side where the same procedure is performed. The Metzenbaum scissors are used to dissect to the deep temporalis fascia lateral to the conjoint tendon, and dissection is carried out inferiorly to the blepharoplasty incision along the anterior surface of the deep temporalis fascia. The freer periosteal elevator is then used to expose the subperiosteal plane medial to the conjoint tendon. The Metzenbaum scissors are then used to transect the conjoint tendon between the medial subperiosteal dissection and the lateral plane on the anterior surface of the deep temporalis fascia. Additional dissection is performed laterally to the lateral orbital rim. This results in the forehead being freely mobile. A 3 serial vicral suture then engages the inferior extent of the superficial temporalis fascia. The suture then engages the superficial temporalis fascia superior to the incision. This is essentially a SMAS lift. Sometimes the deep temporalis fascia is engaged to provide additional fixation. Tightening and tying the suture results in elevation of the temporal brow. The same procedure is performed on the other side. This results in an elevated area at the incision, which will flatten out with time. The scalp incisions are then closed with staples. These will be removed at the one week follow up. Extra stabilization is performed through the blepharoplasty incision with a quantitated internal suture brow pexy. A 4O monocryl suture will be placed through the periosteum approximately 12 millimeters superior to the superior orbital rim. This suture then engages the soft tissue 12 millimeters superior to the incision. Tying the suture helps in stabilization of the brow. An additional suture can be placed medially in the same fashion. I usually just place a lateral suture at this point and do not feel that the medial suture is necessary. The same procedure is performed on the contralateral side. The upper eyelid incisions are then closed with a combination of running and interrupted 5 0 fast absorbing sutures. 6-O proline suture can be used as well. 
At the conclusion of the case, antibiotic ointment will be placed over the incisions and into the eye. The patient will follow up in approximately one week.